The Youngstown Phantoms have made it to the 2017 Clark Cup Playoffs. The first home game is Friday, April 21st, and you can catch all the action live at the Cavelli Center for as low as $12. Dollar popcorn and $2 beer, as well as McDonald's meal deals for just $39.99. Call 330-747-PUCK to reserve your 2017 Clark Cup Playoff tickets. Let's go Phantoms, they're still unfinished business. Welcome in to another segment of Inside the Glass. This is Voice of the Phantoms, Matt Lipsack, and I am joined on the phone by the voice of the Chicago Steel, Rob Sanderson. Well, Rob, welcome back to the program. Thanks for having me again, Matt. How's it going? Oh, we are doing quite well out here in Youngstown, enjoying this beautiful spring day. And, of course, it's the uh, the first day of the NHL playoffs, so we can talk about that in a little bit. Right now we want to talk about the the Clark Cup playoffs, but before we get to that, why don't you tell us about your games from last weekend? Uh, well, uh, the Steel, I mean, it was a three-game weekend, or a three-game week last week. Uh, started out Tuesday night uh, at Waterloo, which was a one nothing shutout loss. Uh, came back home on Friday against Muskegon, um, and, and a loss in that. Muskegon was really battling for home ice in uh, its series against Dubuque, uh, and then the uh, following night, uh, Chicago picked up uh, their first shootout victory of the entire season Saturday night uh, in Madison, kind of a wild game. Ended up going 10 rounds in the shootout, and uh, Alexi Holme from Chicago was the only player to score. Uh, so Alish Stezka made 10 saves on 10 shots, and a couple of them went wide. Um, but uh, a nice way to wrap up the regular season up at Madison, and and now focused in on a series uh, against Youngstown, which, of course... It was a long time there where we thought it was going to be Chicago-Youngstown. Then people started to think maybe it was going to be Chicago-Green Bay. And then uh, I guess you guys have to be pretty big fans of the Bloomington Thunder and that one nothing win they picked up last week to uh, help give the Phantoms that shot over the weekend. And uh, so now we know it's uh, the Steel and the Phantoms, and it should be a, a fun time. Well, Rob, I, I got to tell you, that, that night of the Bloomington-Green Bay game, I had to choose between watching, uh, I think it was the Penguins playing the New Jersey Devils, uh, the Frozen Four uh, in the NCAA yep. and that Bloomington mm-hmm. uh, against Green Bay game. And there were times where I actually had two games going at once, but I was paying a lot of attention to that Green Bay-Bloomington game. And Logan Halliday played one whale of a game for the Bloomington Thunder to keep the oh, fans absolutely. playoffs hope, hopes alive. Yeah, we were, uh, we were at the Frozen Four here in Chicago, and I know uh, a bunch of us were – kind of hanging out between games and just constantly uh, refreshing our USHL app on our phones. And it was scoreless, and it was one nothing. It's like, this is – Bloomington's going to do this. This is, uh, you know, for for a little while there, honestly, like we thought it was going to be Chicago-Green Bay. And uh, Bloomington really coming up with that uh, that big win. You know, they they were obviously sellers originally, at least, at the deadline, and, uh, and came up uh, with a pretty nice run down the stretch. And obviously that win over Green Bay – uh, huge, and and so then obviously we were keeping close tabs with the Phantoms USA games from last weekend, and like I said, now it's going to be the Steel and the Phantoms, and uh, that was a pretty fun five game season series uh, in the regular season, and uh, I'm looking forward to this uh, playoff matchup. Oh, absolutely, and and you mentioned Bloomington being sellers at the trade deadline. You got one of the Mirages brothers, and that's really worked out very well for the Steel, hasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Ben Rogers has come in, and he's been a, a terrific addition uh, for this team on the blue line. Uh, starting to put together a little bit of the offensive game, um, which I, I think you know a lot of uh, scouts, especially for the upcoming NHL draft, uh, have really talked about uh, where his offensive game can go. But I think he's been terrific in the back end, uh, in front of the net, and kind of starting that transition down the ice for the team. So uh, picked up a shorthanded goal a couple weeks back uh, in Kearney uh, at the Tri-City Storm. That was his first goal of the steal. Um, starting to put together some assists as well, and I think you know he's going to be a big part of this uh, Steel team. And quite honestly, you know, I mentioned the NHL draft. There, obviously, these players first and foremost right now. You know, we're trying to get into the playoffs, and now we're going to battle for the Clark Cup. Um, but Mirage has something to prove too. I mean, in terms of the NHL draft coming up here in Chicago in a couple of months, um, he's been pretty highly touted for the draft. But I think you know this time of year, especially with less teams playing, there's going to be a lot more eyes on him. And, uh, you know, this is going to be a, a big, uh, you know, whether it's a week or a month or however long it goes, uh, a big time of the year for him to kind of get those 
those last looks on him before the draft, and I, I'm expecting him to, to really show up and help this team as he has ever since coming over in February. Uh, Chicago finished first in the Eastern Conference, uh, ended up losing out on the Anderson Cup, but did come away with that number one seed in the East. Thinking all the way back to September and maybe even the fall classic, was there a feeling around Fox Valley Ice Arena that maybe the field could be this good this year? You know, I think those conversations started around that uh, 10-game win streak to start the year, which, of course, tied the USHL Tier 1 record and then was ended uh, in Youngstown on Halloween Eve. Um, And uh, I think, you know, at that point people are – you know, some people were, were buying in immediately. Some people were like, well, let's wait and see, or maybe the strength of schedule wasn't as tough in those first 10 games uh, than other stretches of the year. Um, but I, I think, you know, really looking back to last season, the, there's no, you know, no hiding that the Steel were sellers at the trade deadline last season and building pieces for this year. And, you know, I think the hope was that that was going to pay off. There were some big pieces let go toward the end of last year, but the team brought in some guys that were going to be part of this year's team, guys like Adam Karashik, Wyatt Ahmed, that played in the end of last year and kind of got a taste of the league and knew what to work on in the off season, And it just really worked out well. I mean, the team got off to a great start. There were some bumps in the road since then, for sure, um, like any team's going to have. But uh, to me, it's just a, a really good mix of players that play as a team. It's not a, it's not a group of individuals. I mean, it really is a team – I, I don't think that there are necessarily, you know, one or two superstars you need to watch on this team. Uh, it, it's a team that can roll four lines and uh, and really have a lot of different threats and, and different key pieces to the game. And so, um, you know, I think as the season's gone on, like I said, I, there's been some other teams in the East that have certainly um, looked really good as well. And when you look at the teams in the East that – that made it to the playoffs. Chicago has beaten and lost to all of those teams in the regular season. So I, I do think that this thing is wide open right now. Um, but Chicago is obviously happy to have locked up that one seed and, you know, home ice for this series and uh, if advancing next series as well. The Steel have 10 players with double-digit goals. Chicago and Youngstown are the only two teams in the East with at least five players who scored 15 goals. And then out of the five games, that these two teams played this regular season, only in one of those games did a team not score three, and that was Chicago's 2-1 to win in Youngstown on December 2nd. Do you think we'll continue to see the wide-open, high-scoring games in the playoffs that we saw between these two in the regular season? Uh, that's a good question, Matt. I, you know, I, I don't know, because this series to me, uh, when I think back to the most recent meeting, um, you know, a couple weeks back here at Fox Valley Ice Arena, um, that was a big win for the Steel after really not a good weekend when the Phantoms first came here in early February and, and took both games of a weekend set. Um, I just think to the style of play in the most recent game to me seemed like, I mean, both teams were in a three and three, day three of a three and three weekend. And so there's some tired legs out there, things like that. But it, it started to become really physical um, in that game and more than most of the other games in recent memory uh, this season. And so I think that's going to carry over a little bit. Uh, You know, I think there are certainly examples of some guys on each of these teams not really liking each other. Um, You know, there were uh, certainly out of post-whistle scrums and things like that. Um, Obviously, there are some top offensive threats on each squad, but I think really this series is going to come down to the goaltending. Uh, Two of the absolute top goaltenders in this league this season Alex Shezka for Chicago, Ivan Kulvikov for Youngstown. I mean, those guys, these two Euros are going to go at it. I know that they're both very competitive guys. And, uh, you know, I, there are offensive threats, but to have to see who can beat these guys. You know, so I, do I necessarily expect a high-scoring series? I don't know. Uh, with those two guys between the pipes, even though we have seen that in a lot of games this season, I'm almost tempted to, to predict the opposite um, and, and I think this is going to be a tight series. It's going to be physical. Uh, I don't know if we're necessarily going to see, like I said, a lot of flashiness. I think it's going to be good old, you know, old-time playoff hockey. And uh, like I said, I think these teams match up really well. Um, they've proven that they can beat each other. And so we just got to wait and, and see what happens. But obviously we're getting pretty close to game one, and I know the guys here are very excited about it. Yeah, the, the Phantoms did end up taking the regular season series from Chicago. Uh, 
three games to two, but we're just going to throw all of that out the window. All right, Rob, one mm-hmm. last question for you. What do you think needs to happen for Chicago to win this series? Uh, take advantage of home ice, in my opinion. Uh, it's a five-game series, and, uh, you know, that's a lot different than, say, college hockey, maybe if you're it's a, it's a one-and-done type of situation. But five games is not nearly as long as seven. Uh, you can't take a night off, and, and for the steal, I think this weekend is huge. Um, if you're heading into Youngstown next weekend up to nothing, you're in a pretty good spot. If you're tied and then you're going to Youngstown, not nearly as good of a, a situation. It's a quick series. Um, you know, obviously uh, there will be some question marks in terms of uh, players being healthy, things like that. I know uh, Adam Karashik has been out of the lineup uh, the last couple of weeks with an injury with Chicago. Of course, a couple other blue liners and Matt Kierstead and Jesper Kokola are done for the year with injuries. So um, you, you just got to see how these how these series, um, you know, re- come about here this time of year. I, I think when you uh, get into this time of year where you're playing a team potentially five games in a row. It's a lot different, especially for a team like Chicago, maybe more than Youngstown because, you know, you guys are a little bit more isolated geographically, so you say you see the same opponent two nights in a row a fair amount of times. That barely ever happens for Chicago. And so when you get into those situations where you're playing the same team two nights in a row or five games in a row, it's a little bit different to see if the other team starts to figure out what you're doing and how to counter that. And so I'm interested to see how things play out in this series. The teams are very familiar with each other, um, but it's going to be a lot different here seeing these teams night after night and see who wants it more. Um, I know that there are a lot of veterans on the Chicago team, a lot of older guys uh, that have had you know long junior careers. They want to wrap it up uh, in the best fashion possible. Um, but to me, I think you know the Steel have to get off to a, a strong start and really – if there's anything I can pinpoint this season, um, you know, it's kind of a typical hockey cliche almost, but putting together that 60-minute effort. There are, there are too many examples this season where the Steel get out to a great lead or they have an amazing first period and then just take the foot off the gas and don't go all the way to the final horn. Um, that, to me, is critical for this series. If they can put together 60-minute efforts, they've proven they can beat anybody uh, in this league. But like I said, there have been losses to Youngstown and Dubuque and Muskegon. And so uh, in my mind, this thing is wide open right now. Um, Youngstown's a team that's obviously battled to get into the playoffs, uh, took the season series in the regular season. And so it's anybody's game. Made it to the dance now, and uh, and now you basically start from scratch and see what happens. But it uh, should be fun. And, uh, you know, now we're getting close to the puck drop on the series. And uh, like I said, just got to see – what Chicago can do this weekend on home ice before we head out to uh, Eastern Ohio next week. The voice of the Chicago Steel, Rob Sanderson. You can catch his calls of Game 1 and Game 2 Friday on, and Saturday on Hockey TV and the Chicago Steel's broadcast network on MixLR. Rob, thank you so much for joining us here on Inside the Glass. Yeah, absolutely, Matt. Looking forward to this uh, series, and we'll see you soon. All right, sounds good. Thank you very much, Rob, for joining us once again. And don't go away because in our final segment of this week's episode, Sean and I will take a look at the USHL Players of the Week from the final week of the regular season, give you the final standings, and take a look at the playoff bracket. So don't go away. <laughs> 